What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. Alright guys, so it's time for us to jump back into our ultimate Marvel reading order. And guys, today we pick up with Ultimate Spider-Man, the second half of Volume 3. Now guys, if you are new to my channel, basically every Monday we upload one video covering the Ultimate Marvel reading order. And so guys, so far we have covered Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate X-Man, Ultimate Elektra and Daredevil, and guys we also covered Ultimates, which is this universe version of the Avengers. Now. Guys, like I said, this is the second half of Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 3. Because guys, Volume 3 was 8 books long. 8 books. And so I say, you know what? Let's break up Volume 3 into two different videos. Now, guys, we pick up with Ultimate Spider-Man number 18. And the thing is, guys, we do pick up where our last video left off at with Spider-Man basically leaving high school early to go stop Doc Ock because Doc Ock was attacking one of Justin Hammer's projects. Thing is though, Spider-Man crash land at the very end of our last video in front of Doc Ock. And so guys, number 18 picks up where our last video left off at. Now guys, Brian Michael Bendis in this book right here, he basically said, you're gonna watch Spider-Man get his butt kicked by Doc Ock. In the first like 12 pages, it's Doc Ock beating down on Peter Parker. Now, you would think that because Peter Parker has fought the Green Goblin. He has fought Electro. He has fought against the Kingpin. And you would think that he would be able to defend himself against all these different kind of attacks by now. But the thing is though, Doc Ock is something new, something different from those past characters. And so Spider-Man, Peter Parker, he still has to learn on what it's like to be a superhero, that you're gonna have a different villain every single week. Yeah, you fought Electro and Kingpin last week, but this week, hey, guess what? You're fighting a guy who has four extra arms. Now, like I said, Doc Ock beats down on Spider-Man like he was nothing. I mean, Doc Ock punches and throws Peter Parker around the whole building like he is nothing. Now, you do have Doc Ock throw Spider-Man onto the docks in front of a bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Now, this is basically Doc Ock telling S.H.I.E.L.D. and telling the world, you can't stop me. If he couldn't stop me, then who else do you have that can stop me? Now guys, remember, by this point in Ultimate Marvel, it takes place before Ultimates Volume 1, which means there's no Ultimates, which means Captain America is not around, Iron Man's around, Thor's around, Black Widow, Hawkeye's around, but the thing is though, are you really gonna call them in to stop one guy? Like, can you? Because Iron Man, right now, at this point of Ultimate Marvel does not work for S.H.I.E.L.D. Only Hawkeye and Black Widow does, and that's it. But can they stop Doc Ock? Can they? That's the big question right there. Now, you do have all these S.H.I.E.L.D. agents surround Peter Parker, kind of like, hey man, you're under arrest, we're gonna bring you in, it's time to give up. The thing is though, Peter Parker was able to get away and run back home to his house. Now. We do pick up with Peter Parker with Mary Jane and Mary Jane being that good girlfriend, you know, basically taking care of Peter Parker because he got his butt kicked. He got bruises all over his body right now. And so it's kind of like, dude, you need an actual doctor, but I understand you can't go to a hospital because you're Spider-Man. Now, Mary Jane does clean him up, kiss him goodbye, and she goes home. But to wrap up number 18, at the very end of this book right here, Aunt May, she is walking down the staircase while Peter Parker is still in his Spider-Man outfit and also badly bruised and beat up by Doc Ock. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 19, 
with this book right here guys it does pick up where number 18 left off at now you do have aunt may about to walk in the room and basically see her nephew peter parker in his spider-man outfit now guys it does seem like oh crap aunt may is about to find out that her nephew is spider-man but luckily for peter parker there was a window right behind him and so he was able to climb out the window climb upstairs to his upstairs bathroom and say hey up may i'm upstairs i'm in my bathroom don't worry i have the runs so do not come in the bathroom basically saying hey listen i'm in my spider-man outfit please don't come in here now we do jump over to midtown high now guys we do open up with peter parker and mary jane talking to one another basically guys is mary jane checking up on her boyfriend because hey he just got beat up on by doc ock in the last book she's kind of like hey are you okay he's kind of like yeah i'm good i just wish all my bruises go away by now now craven walks into midtown high now guys remember in our last video we discussed that craven he flew into new york to hunt down spider-man for his tv show to improve the ratings because hey his tv show is not doing that well right now and so if he's able to hunt down spider-man his ratings will fly to the roof and so right now he's here at midtown high looking for clues to be able to find spider-man because guys remember back in volume one the green goblin attacked midtown high looking for peter parker and so right now it's craving kind of like if i'm able to go through this high school and find some kind of evidence that can lead me to whoever spider-man is it will make my job easier now luckily for, for peter parker craven was not able to find anything that can lead him to peter parker so it's kind of like whoo you got lucky now we are going to jump over a few pages in this book right here but the thing is though guys we pick up with justin hammer in his office now guys remember justin hammer he was the guy who sent over Doc Ock to Oscorp to basically sabotage Oscorp because Justin Hammer and Norman Osborn, they were competitors against each other. They both ran two businesses that were fighting over the best title ever, like, you know, the military contracts. And so Justin Hammer sent Doc Ock over to sabotage Oscorp. The thing is though, guys, back in volume one when norman osborne and doc ock worked on the green goblin formula the lab blew up the lab blew up and so guys we we jump back to justin hammer in his office and he's calling up his scientists at the labs kind of like listen tell me that one of our projects is ready to go to protect me against doc ock the thing is though guys doc ock is at that lab and he killed the scientist that hammer is trying to talk to and so you have hammer kind of like doc you know what are you doing like why did you kill him and he says i'm here to get revenge against you justin you sent me over to oscorp to sabotage that company and look what happened to me when Norman Osborn worked on that random project of his, but well, his lab blew up and these arms are now attached to my body. It's your fault that we're here right now. It's your fault. And so you have Doc Ock say, you will come down here to talk to me in person. And you, if you don't come, I'll come to you and basically kill you in your office. And so you have Hammer say, I have no choice. He blames me for what happened to him. Yes, I did send him over there to sabotage Oscorp, but I did not know that Norman Osborn laboratory will, blew up, will blow up. I didn't know that, but I have to talk to Doc Ock. 
And so you have Justin Hammer get in his limo and drive down to meet up with Doc Ock. Now, to wrap up number 19, guys, a lot of things happen in this book right here at the end. Because you do have Spider-Man get on the limo on the roof. Oh, I'm sorry. He gets on the roof of the limo to follow Hammer all the way up to Doc Ock. Because Peter Parker wants to stop Doc Ock before this goes even farther. Now, we do jump over to Craven real quick. And the thing is though, guys, Craven, right now, Craven, his agent says, hey, listen, man, we just spotted Spider-Man. Right now, He's on top of a limo heading to New Jersey. And so you have Craven say, let's go. It's time for me to bring him down, to bring him in for two reasons. One, because of the hunt, but two, to save my TV show. And so you have Craven change into his Craven outfit to go hunt Peter Parker. Now, to wrap up number 19, as soon as Justin Hammer arrives in New Jersey, to meet with Doc Ock, he sees that Doc Ock, he called every single news channel you can think of in New Jersey, and he says, welcome. You guys are about to find out the biggest secret from a man in New York. This man right here. This man right here. He sabotaged my life, and he tried to sabotage Oscorp, and he is going to tell the truth right here, right now, in front of every single live camera. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 20, with this book right here guys, it does pick up where number 19 left off at. Now, you do have Doc Ock telling every single news channel there the truth. He's saying, listen, that man right there in that limo, Justin Hammer, he sent me to go over to Oscorp to basically sabotage that company. And when I got there, I was working fine with Norman Osborn. But when Norman Osborn started to work on his little Oz formula, his laboratory blew up. And now these arms are part of my body. And it's all because of Justin Hammer. Because he wanted to end Oscorp so bad he sent me over there to basically sabotage that company. Now, you do have Doc Ock say, get out of that limo, get over here, and tell every single person here the truth. Like, I want you out of that limo and telling every single news channel the truth that it's because of you that I'm like this right now. Now, you do have Hammer kind of like, no. I am not getting out of his limo because you'll kill me. I'm not that crazy. The thing is though, Doc Ock starts to attack the limo. He's kind of like, you have two options. Get out of that limo or die in that limo. It's up to you. But either way, you're gonna die. And so it's kind of like, well, dang Doc, chill a little bit. Now, Peter Parker does arrive as Spider-Man to fight against Doc Ock. Now guys, this point of storyline right here is basically Brian Michael Bendis saying, Peter knows how to fight against Doc Ock now. He knows how to handle himself against Doc Ock. And so even though the fight does last for like a few pages, Peter Parker was able to defeat Doc Ock just like that. Like bam, we're done, cool, it's over. Now, it does seem like well, this will be the end of the story because Doc Ock is defeated. Peter Parker was able to save everybody and defeat Doc Ock. But the thing is though, to wrap up number 20, we forgot about one character who came to New York to basically hunt Peter Parker down, Craven. Craven arrives and he's kind of like, hey, listen, you fought against Doc Ock and you beat him, but now you're tired, now you're exhausted and that gives me the edge to defeat you for my TV show. And that wraps up Ultimate Spider-Man number 20. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate Spider-Man number 21, with this book right here, guys, it does pick up where 
the last book left off at. Now guys, this is the book that basically wraps everything up for us for Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 3. Now, we do pick up with Kraven about to fight against Spider-Man. Now guys, real quick side note. The way Brian Michael Bendis sat down and portrayed Kraven in the storyline, Brian Michael Bendis is basically saying Kraven is a C-list super villain. What I mean is that if you sit if you sit down and think about it guys, Peter Parker has not been able to defeat somebody when he first meet them. For example, Green Goblin, he got lucky because the police arrived and shot Green Goblin. Electro Kingpin, when he first met those characters, he lost that fight. Doc Ock, same thing too. Lost that first fight. But for Kraven, he was kind of like, you know what? He's a C-list villain and Peter Parker should be able to defeat Kraven in a few pages. And bam, just like that, Kraven was defeated by Peter Parker. And you're kind of like, are you serious? Just like that? That easily? Because Kraven is not that easy most times. But for Brian Michael Bendis, he's saying in Ultimate Marvel, Kraven is a nobody. He's someone that can be easily defeated. Even though Peter Parker just fought against Doc Ock and exhausted, he was able to defeat Kraven like it was no big deal. Now, we do jump over to the home of the Parkers because guys, Peter Parker is in trouble because he was in New Jersey when he fought against Doc Ock and Kraven. And the thing is, he has to get home because he's past curfew right now. And so Peter Parker's kind of like, okay, if I can get home, maybe Aunt May is already in bed. Maybe she's not awake. The thing is though, as soon as he walks in the house, she is right there. And she's kind of like, hi right, Peter Parker, where in the world were you tonight? You are past curfew. And Peter's kind of like, oh, well, Aunt May, I was at the Daily Bugle, and then you have her say, oh, I called there. They told me you had today off. Then he said, oh, well, I was with Mary Jane. And you have her say, oh, it's funny because uh, I called there, and her mom said, you were not there. So one more time, tell me where in the world were you, Peter Parker? And the thing is, guys, Peter Parker's kind of like, I can't tell her that I'm Spider-Man. I can't tell her that. That is something I cannot literally tell her. And so guys, he says, I can't tell you. And that just ticks off Aunt May. She's kind of like, you know what? You're grounded. You're grounded. Like, if you want to be in my house as a liar, well, you're grounded. There's no more free time for you. It's school, then here. Daily Bugle, you'll have to quit. You are no longer allowed to be anywhere else at all. And it's kind of like, dang, she's gonna make him quit his job, not see his girlfriend, and that's it? Like, dang, it's crazy. Anyways, and so you have Peter Parker go upstairs and basically starts pouting. He's kind of like, dang, you know, I just saved New York and New Jersey from Doc Ock and Craven, but I'm grounded, cool. Now, to wrap up number 21 in volume 3 of Spider-Man, we do pick up with Doc Ock in the prison of S.H.I.E.L.D. And the thing is guys, Doc Ock, he starts to remember more things. He sits down and realizes, wait a second, the reason why Norman Osborn laboratory blew up because he was working on the Oz formula. Because the Oz formula worked on Peter Parker who got bit by a spider. I just fought Spider-Man. And he realized Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And so now guys, Doc Ock also knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And guys, that is the ending of volume three of Ultimate Spider-Man. But anyways guys, 
I'm going ahead and end today's video. Please leave me a like down below. Also, subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, let me know in the comments below. Because, you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But, anyways, I'm out of here, guys. Later.